So Herka, you've been in other films and TV shows, so it's safe to say you're no first time actress. But if I've done my homework correctly, this is the first time you've made it as an action figure. Absolutely. How does it feel knowing that there's, how does it feel knowing that there's toy merchandise out there that children are playing with that is based on a character that you've brought to life? I mean, I am so excited about it. You know, I love my toys. Um, I have a toy shelf in my house. Um, so she's definitely going up there um, as the crown jewel. And I'm just so excited to, um, by the, the idea of like, you know, little girls and boys around the world can play with um, this, you know, um, badass uh, female character um, as an action figure. I think that's really awesome. And what was the biggest challenge that you encountered in entering the G.I. Joe universe as this new character, Akiko? Um, definitely the, the fight training, um, because um, Akiko is such a skilled fighter and that's not something you can really fake, you know? So I had to really um, get into the training and um, go through the grind. Um, we spent two months um, training every day, uh, four hours daily. Um, with the stunt team who were amazing um, to work with and they were our senseis. So they taught us, you know, um, how to handle these weapons and fight with these weapons. Um, so that would be my daily routine to, you know, train with them four hours every day. And then I'd go home with my practice weapons um, that are like softer, uh, made out of foam and go straight to the gym and, you know, practice on my own for like another couple of hours. Um, so that was quite challenging, but I just wanted to do the character justice. So it was definitely worth it. And I had a great time. No, that, that's awesome. Like I loved every action sequence in the film. I'm, I'm curious, what was your favorite <laughs> film? Um, I mean, they were all very fun. Um, but my character does a lot of like jumping from high places, uh, which was very, um, thrilling um because i'm not a huge fan of heights um so it felt quite empowering to be able to do that i understand that you were born in tokyo and you've lived in new york and london as a child and yeah. you eventually returned to japan as a teenager mm -hmm. what was it like returning to japan to film snake eyes it was um it was quite bizarre because i i you know barely filmed anything in japan maybe i've done a couple of projects in japan but um it feels very, my work life and my, um, you know, family life feels so separate. Um, but because I got to spend like two months there filming Snake Eyes, I got to see my family, you know, on my days off and stuff, which was quite jarring. But um, it felt like a, um, I've always wanted to um, work in Japan as well. So it felt like a homecoming and it was very exciting. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Japan, when uh, you were filming in Vancouver, how well did you, in your opinion, did the sets resemble Japan? Oh, it was, they did such a fantastic job. Um, yeah, it was, it did resemble Japan a lot. Um, most of the scenes we shot in Vancouver were like interior scenes. Um, and did we do, yeah, we did a lot of like, the, the car chase scene was shot in Vancouver. Um, but obviously, you know, going to Japan to film on these like practical uh, locations was a, a completely different story. Um, and it was really awesome to be able to do that. Um, I, I kind of want to like dive in a little deeper into your character, Kiko, because mm -hmm. there was so much to her character that I, I would describe as mysterious, just because there's a lot of untold stories. She talks about the scar of, of mm -hmm. the last time she trusted someone and yes. why she is so loyal to the Arashikage uh, due to having like a lonely origin. Mm -hmm. Did, did uh, the producers or, or writers tell you any, anything that you know that wasn't shown on screen? Yes, um, well, um, there were some scenes that, or dialogue that was, that got cut out um, before we started filming, but because we had like two months of prep where we got to really, um, do like serious text work with the director, with the, the other cast. Um, so some of those details got um, cut out um, because, you know, for this film, we wanted to focus, really focus on Snake and his relationship with like his brotherhood with Tommy. Um, but yes, they, I did get some info on her background and I also got to expand 
um, on that too. So I have some um, backstory that I came up with um, based on the information that the writers and the director gave me. Oh, well, hopefully we can uh, like find some of that stuff out in like a director's cut or something. Hopefully. Yeah, or, uh, or we can see more of a Kiko in a sequel. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, if I read the production as correctly, I, I think it was Henry who needed the most uh, martial arts training having not been as trained in it as Andrew or yourself. Is, is that true? You had some familiarity uh, with martial arts? I was probably on the same level as Henry in terms of um, martial art, previous martial art training. Um, I've done some like like boxing and capoeira and you know I trained in dance and stuff but I've never like fought with weapons before um, and I was actually really amazed to learn that um, Henry had never like done any martial art films before because he is so like awesome um, in this film um, so I think he really um, put in the effort that was required to, you know, do justice to this character and he really nailed it. There's like another aspect of Akiko's character that I was really fond of and it was like her, that her loyalty to the Arashikage, that, that dutiful loyalty to family, which I saw kind of like play off of what Tommy had, what uh, Snake Eyes had, where Snake mm -hmm. Eyes had a lack of family, Tommy being born into the Arashikage mm -hmm. and her right. having that unique path to say like like this is my family now I will do anything to protect them mm -hmm. where did where did you kind of base that that uh that characteristic off of I mean I think it's a very human um it's in human nature to want that connection and want the want to like um the need of like somewhere that you can feel like you belong and stuff so that was definitely very relatable um for me and yeah I think she definitely sees um a bit of herself in Snake in the sense that you know that he also you know yearns for that connection um and I think she, her relationship with Tommy is a bit like this um you know sibling thing of him keeping like putting down Akiko because you know his like the the prince of the family um so that was quite relatable as well um so yeah i, I hope hopefully um because it's all drawn from like you know real human feelings um the character comes across as like being grounded and all that there was that scene when um snake eyes is going through the last of the three trials and just when you think he's not going to make it out of their life akiko like jumps in and saves him and <laughs> And she does what I, I feel like all the fans in the audience w wanted to see happen. Like, hey, he doesn't deserve to go out this way. But what was, what would you say was Akiko's motivation in choosing to save him, knowing that, hey, he if he doesn't pass, he doesn't pass? Mm -hmm. Well, I think she um, sees his like vulnerability, um, and she start she had started to like you know care for him because of um, you know because she understands his his backstory and his, um, you know, um, what he so desperately wants. Um, so I think she has started to feel kind of protective of him and um, he, she wants him to like, you know, do okay, not get hurt. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Haruka. Really appreciate it. Thank you, likewise. Thank you.